So, comments. Alchemist says, here's a thesis. Apes throwing feces coin at each other is how this ends. Potentially, potentially, I'm not for sure. But, uh, you know, I did see that uh, Snoop Dogg and somebody else recorded a, a song that you can only buy with, I think it's ApeCoin, which I'm like, okay. I've no, I, I can't remember the last time I actually bought a song online, but I mean, maybe that works out pretty well. I usually just stream it from YouTube, actually, but sure. And let's see what else we got. Fascinating. Great concept. Thanks, man. Uh, Moonbeam for the win. Have you looked into Kadena? I think it's one of the law potential. You know, um, C.T. Larson, and he's got a, a video I just popped up. It's, it's on my, my, my playlist to watch next. He's, the, the, the thumbnail was uh, uh, Hodel is overrated. So I got to check that out. But he's the one that, he's actually the one that reviewed Kadena and at first said it's not that great. And then he had the CEO come on the show and he's like, it's not that bad. So yeah. But um, the question then is, well, will I get into it? I have to take a real, real heavy look. And it would have to be super awesome, especially right now. Let me go from there. Steph says, which coins are you DCing at the hardest? Very simple, Bitcoin, Ethereum. I'm also buying uh, Amazon right now because they're going to do a stock split. Goddamn flies. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> going for dinner next time. We're... Listen, uh El Dionis, I get like requests all the time. Don't take it personal. We'll do a meetup when I go back to Puerto Rico, which will be for everybody, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> how high do you think Luna and Luna Classic will get to? I'm pretty sure it topped out, but I could be wrong. Maybe it goes 100x. I don't know, but I'm not going to touch it. Uh, when trust is gone, it's very hard to get that back, and I don't know. And speaking of which, I just saw this text. Let me read it to you. This is actually pretty, pretty crazy. A friend from Puerto Rico sent this over. It's called, it's a uh, follow Fat Man Terra says uh, a verified insider, insider close to TFL has confirmed that Do Kwan is currently working on design plans for a new decentralized stablecoin that we will be built atop Terra 2. Who's going to get into that? I'm just asking. I'm definitely not. <laughs> All right, Sauce says, All while the Ethereum Foundation is telling me that 2.0 is no longer 2.0 and it's delayed and now the catchphrase is Ether. Can you smell it? So that was a, a good story. So Vitalik comes out and he says, August. August the day where that's the upgrade. That's where we're gonna go to the merge, which is this the second portion on the on on the on the three legs of of this upgrade. And then in that same interview, which no one really talked about, he said, Well, if we find some problems, it could be September, or maybe October, but we're shooting for August. I'm like, okay. I don't hold my breath. I mean, I'm not gonna hold my breath in this one. Again, if you're looking at a six month out out outlook. You can, but in the long run, it's not going to do out do you any good. I think three year, five year, ten year is the way to look at uh, this market, and just exactly what I said in the very beginning. Uh, take a look at the ones that have been around and have stood the test of time. Those are the ones to get into. You can be risky and invest in some degen plays, but that's the that's the degen plays. I do it. I do it too. I'm not looking down on you. Like how dare you? You know, invest in a degen. I've got a second channel called Dan Degen. So they've worked out pretty well, but uh, they're like 5%, 3 to 5% of my portfolio. 95% is the safety stuff. All right. Fate is a sleeping giant, perhaps. Ah, thank you. Gas, gas, gas fee fees says uh, Ethereum 2.0 is not a consensus layer. That's right. But it is not centralized, even though a small group can rename the project. <laughs> I promise. Hey, what is it? What is it? Okay, so I keep getting questions and questions about this. Rob, what's your take on everything happening with Celsius? So I talked about this yesterday. I'll just have to have, what's gonna have to happen is Alex Machinsky is gonna have to make the rounds again and get in everybody's channel and, 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 and address this issue. Because the issue is not what's happening with Celsius, but a wallet that was in the possession at one point with 
Alex Mashinsky, allegedly, don't sue me. And uh, it looks like there was some uh, allocation of, of, uh, of tokens, not the Celsius token, but other tokens beforehand that were uh, purchased and then given to somebody else and then were dumped. So that's the issue right now. Unless I've missed something else in the last 12 hours. Enlighten me in the comment section. <laughs> Damn, you can tell us the bird. Look from the viewer count. I got to tell you, let me tell you something. I'm just glad you guys are here. You guys are, more, are, are my core audience. There's about 16, 1,700 people right now. Great. Sometimes it's 2,000, sometimes it's 3,000. It doesn't matter because the tourists, as we like to call them, tourists are gone. You know, if you're here right now in this junk market, it's not junk. It's just a down, it's just a natural progression of a market. Then you are the ones that I want to talk to. And the reason is because you understand that there has to be a long term outlook. And you've done uh, plenty of research. You've looked at a lot of different things. I love you guys. I really like the people that are here right now. What I hate, hate was in 2020. Well, I, not hate's a very strong word, my mom would say. I detest greatly is in 2021 when everybody was asking me about the most ridiculous projects out there. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. And people are like, can you believe Rob doesn't know about pistachio coin? What a moron, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well debatable but uh you know those people are gone and i'm glad they're gone because i can't stand them anyhow because it's just noise and then once all the noise is done then you get to see like where the path forward is and i think we can kind of see it to me it's clear as day but that's just me uh yeah i missed the salmon colored shirt. i will have to get a salmon colored shirt yeah that's right. So John Hunter says Voyager through. That was one of my price predictions, which is why I don't do price predictions anymore. It went when I called it though, it was 29 cents and I went to seven bucks. I do like to say that. However, people would still see that video at seven dollars and think it's going to 30. They're like, well, I can just, you know, quadruple my and then they bought in and it didn't work out. So no more price prediction videos. And really, no one knows anyhow. It's a good guess, but come on. And the, and the other thing I do is no price prediction videos. And I'm going to, and I, and I talked to, I talked to uh, mullet about this. We're going to keep each other accountable, which is when the market goes up, talk about taking profits. Like I did today, like right now, right now, I don't know where you are at, but if you're up five, seven, 13%, maybe it's an idea to take a little off the table. Just saying, just saying, because you know what diamond hands does to you. Just saying. Just saying. All right. Mm. <laughs> Unshelled pistachio coin. <laughs> Luna 2.0 is twice better. Two times zero equals zero. Jason says it right. You take props if you can. Clown market going up. Oh, this is a good question. What's your thoughts on playing the grayscale discount with a multi-year time horizon? So what they're talking about is you, everybody believes that there is a, is a, a spot Bitcoin ETF. And right now, if you get into grayscale with their Bitcoin fund, that essentially you are getting a massive discount for when it actually gets turned into a spot ETF. You can do that, but... Um, it actually would probably be a good play because at some point it's going to happen. But the question is, will Grayscale be the first one? And some people say, well, obviously they're going to be the first one because they've, they've been hitting it so much and, they, and they've really, you know, I've been talking to the regulators and they've done, you know, their due diligence. It's a crapshoot and it doesn't, I don't know. So maybe they're not the first one, maybe the second or the third, or maybe they never get it. But I will tell you this, I'm not holding my breath on an ETF. I've heard that since 2017. That's all I know. But uh, yeah, I think it's, in all honesty, I mean, if you really want exposure to crypto and you don't really like the exchanges or you don't really like self-custody, uh, Grayscale ETF, or Grayscale ETF, Grayscale Fund is probably the better way to go. Uh, Dan, do we basically follow NASDAQ at this point? It's a great question. I don't think it's over. It's Memorial Day. Am I wrong? Let me see. It's a national holiday here in America, so... Oh. Uh, 
don't think that's right. Let's see. One second. Yeah, so it is closed. Um, but the, the question is, is still the same. Do we basically follow NASDAQ? Well, there was a nice decoupling on Friday, you know, and uh, not the decoupling we wanted. NASDAQ and the S&P went like this and Bitcoin just fell down. And that was pretty concerning. But now we have a little bit of a rally. It'd be interesting, though, to see what happens tomorrow on Tuesday. That, that will be telling. Because that'd be great if there was a decoupling finally. Huh? Do you think the Solana outages are a huge red flag? Well, you know, I mean, I still own some Solana, so I would like it not to do that. That would be great. But it is, it is interesting. Like, cause some people say, well, it's not an outage. It's not a complete outage. It's just a slowdown. And some people say, it's not a slowdown. It's an outage. You know what I do? Uh, there's a website. Let me show it to you. It's called status dot solana.com and you can just take a look at how much uptime it is now there are you know some chains that are up 100 percent. this one obviously is not is it a red flag i'd like to not see that and then of course i also did see a uh, a messaging where it talked about how or messaging a tweet and some data points where it says that a lot of the transactions are just messaging back and forth. However, if you look at it, transactions per second still is pretty high. But for me, in all honesty, this is just another roll of the dice. Will Solana be the next big thing? The only, one of the reasons why I do like it is just because of how much Sam Bakeman fried is behind it and, uh, and FTX. Also, FTX did a great job of... Uh, given the, uh, their users the ability to trade equities in the U.S., which is super impressive to be able to do. They've rolled that out to select users, and they will roll that out to everybody at some point. But just to get that off the ground with what the regulatory environment we have with the SEC was outstanding. So if he can get that done, and he's really behind Solana, looks not too bad. Also, Ledger is coming out with uh, Ledger, you know, Ones like these, the ledgers. Uh, they're coming out with a, like a MetaMask type wallet, which you can use on your browser. And they're going to put in Solana and Ethereum and uh, make the next push for Web3. So that's just one of those things. So will, this, will Solana be able to handle up with that? Only time will tell. And that's why you just, if you want a DCA, you get into it. Although I think there's some more downside coming. Uh, Note, no, if rates go up, money leaves bonds to something else. I don't know why people get into bonds right now. I mean, it is safe, but what, what's the percentage? 2.64, somewhere around there. I don't like it. <laughs> Cracking. Where did the, Paul Diamond is not from America. Cracking information, Rob, much appreciated. That's a guy from, I'm going to guess, London. Just a guess, but thank you. This is another thing. Rob, what's your ETH play considering 2.0 is going to unlock tokens for ETH Not, You're not going to see a mass unlock for ETH 2.0 as far as the information that I've seen. You're going to have some unlocks uh, go forward, but if they all take profits, we're probably in for a pretty big dip. But I understand though. I mean, if you, some people are going to sell, right? If they, if there is the unlock and they get a bunch of them out, some are going to sell. But if you were one of those people that said, you know what, I'm putting it in and uh, I have a pretty general great idea of what Ethereum is, what it can do. Do you think you're going to sell when it's, when it's able to unlock? Yeah, some of it. And you'll probably see a little bit of a dip. So maybe if you're a trader, you can play that route and go, well, there's been a bunch of unlocks coming. I'm going to dump this. But again, maybe the self-fulfilling prophecy. That's up for you to decide. Me personally, I'm not going to. I will say it would be great though, is if they do dump it and it price goes down, that means my, my daily dollar cost averaging amount, I just get some more Ethereum. And not that I'm saying buy every dip because that's not a good idea either. Uh, you can dollar cost average uh, every week, every month. 
just depends on how much you have. But remember, um, some people think there's a tremendous downside coming. Some people say it's just going to be flat for a while. So it's up to you to decide which way to go. Like me personally, I was trying to micro DCA some, some different projects. Um, and I was going to do it every day, but now I just do it. I, I do two altcoins and I flip them every, every week uh, for what I, instead of doing daily DCA, I call it micro DCA. I do it every two weeks. All right. Rob, you think Raul was right about outperforming Bitcoin soon? I don't know. But uh, either way, it's pretty good if you're tell <laughs> across averaging Bitcoin or Ethereum. Again, these narratives that come up, you can sit around and discuss and, and everything else. That's, that's the, the minutia of what it is. And you can go that route. Me personally, I don't like to, to look at and go, well, this is going to beat this one. It's going to come up and maybe there's a flipping. I don't really care. I just, I just care about you know, the things that I invest into, I don't get looned and, uh, and that there actually keeps, keep building and keep growing. And I you know, just dollar cost average into that. And that's it. And then of course the, the next big thing is when to take profits. Well, that is a going to be a central focus. And I already, already talked about this going forward. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. Diamond hands are not for everybody. And then Alfred said, would you move your altcoins to Bitcoin? I already did it. I already did it before. And if you've watched the show for any length of time, you know, you know that I was talking about how altcoins, you know, there's going to be a dip coming in and we're going to see a pretty bad market. So that's what I did. Mm. This is a great question. It's a loaded question. At what percentage do you take profits? So I, I had this, this um, and, and you can still see it. It was my uh, exit strategy. And I thought where Bitcoin would go and where Ethereum would go and where Cardano would go. And I was wrong. Bitcoin, I, was, I did not hit the, hit the mark. I thought it was going to 150K, went to 67K. Ethereum, I thought it was going to go to 10K, went to 4,500. Cardano, I thought it was going to go to three bucks. And it did. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, but people would always ask me like, well, if you're going to take profits at 60 K, why would you dollar cost average if it goes down below 30 K? And here's the reason why. So when you think of dollar cost averaging as planting seeds, like you're a farmer, I've talked about this, this analogy before. So let's just say that you plant seeds when Bitcoin is $10,000, you buy, uh, a thousand dollars worth every month. And for some reason, maybe it stays stable at 10. This is just an example. So for 10 months, January, February, March, for 10 months, you put a thousand bucks in dollar cost average. And then guess what? At the very end, you got one Bitcoin. Great. Then the very next day, the price goes up to 20 K. Well, okay. Maybe those seeds that you planted for the last 10 months, maybe you harvest a little bit and go, I'm taking profits. I'm going to take 5,000 out and I'm going to keep, but I'm going to keep dollar cost averaging a thousand at 20,000. Right. Then after 10 months or 20 months, it goes up. So it's like, it's like steps. Da, 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 da. You take your profits out, right? And you're like, okay, I got five grand in here, plus stuff on it, and it comes over here. Da, 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 da. I plant the seeds. And when it starts to, the price goes up, like we're seeing right, right now, maybe it's time to harvest all those seeds of dollar cost average you did before, and then roll it into something that you would like to buy or need to buy or whatever else it is that you want to do, or put it into something like real estate. That's my favorite play. So yes. So, uh, over, so the question is, what percentage do you take profits? It's not a percentage for me, but when I take a look at, when I take a look at the initial, uh, what I actually put in, a great idea, which was helped me out pretty well, is if I put in 100,000 and crypto goes to 200,000, guess what? I'm taking that initial investment out, 100K. And I'm sticking on the sidelines and I'm waiting for things to go down and crash, which I'm hoping, I hate to say this, but I'm hoping that uh, the real estate market takes a big blunder. That way I can pick up some cheap properties. So now I have 100,000, which is just the house money. And I let that ride. And if it doubles again, so much the better. That's just one way to do it. But uh, you can do it however way you want to do it. I take a look in the description, the, all, the exit strategies. I just talk about 2020, 2020, and you can see it over there. 
Uh, no pool dive anytime. Do you think it's Bitcoin to drop to 12K? Anything's possible. It was laughable. Wasn't it laughable not too long ago where we were at 67, 48, 50K? And people were like, it can drop to, to 8,000. Like, that's stupid. And now we're seriously debating, like, maybe 12. So it's interesting. Do I think it could drop to 12? Anything's possible. And uh, that's why it's important that you take profits along the way, depending on your profitability. And again, of course, I can't tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I do. But I just take lessons from the past. And, you know, people like Nick, time in the market is more important than timing the market. And Warren Buffett, it's not about timing the stock market. It's just about picking the right project or company and writing that out. Essentially, that's what's going on here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, now nah, we're talking, uh, hater Saeed says, get initial investment out from crypto and buy property to rent it out. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about that. Matter of fact, because the rates are so low, I was seriously thinking about, uh, putting out a, taking out a loan against the properties that I have, which at 4.5, whatever percent it is uh, these days, stick that money in the bank wait for things to crash down, then buy those properties, then rent them out, and then come out this way. That's something I could potentially do. I don't think, I'm not saying for anybody to do that. It's not a good idea for everybody. What? CJ Reichel is here. Celebrity. That's the guy that uh, we did that, uh, that great video with. Okay. It did go to AK. <laughs> Which one? Well, I mean, I, you got to be talking about, about Bitcoin. Yeah. Short-term trades. I'm up 100%, take half off. Why not? Exactly. Hit the like and subscribe. Always reminded. Thank you. Just found you. You seem sensible. Sensible enough. I just made a lot of mistakes. You can learn from mistakes but they don't have to be your mistakes. That's a quote from a guy who, who hates cryptocurrency, but it still is true, no matter if he hates crypto or not. Warren Buffett. When did, when did cash become a thing of interest again? When we actually stood up and realized, oh yeah, uh, we still need cash to buy stuff. That's when. So I know people were like, I'm never using cash. I'm just going to use uh, crypto to buy everything. That's cool. I mean, you can do that, but... Cash is still king. And actually, just between us, it's only a couple thousand people. No one will tell on me. Uh, if you want to launder anything, uh, cash is great. And if you want to hide things from the IRS, cash is the ultimate. Now, I may or may not have taken, per se, cash transactions and not reported those transactions because they were in cash. Just saying. I know Gary Gensler watched this, so... Gary, you don't have to tell anybody from the IRS. It's okay. But cash does work out pretty well in those situations. So it's always funny to me when people say, oh, you can launder so much money with, with crypto. I'm like, you ever use cash? It's super simple. All right. Uh, David Craig, founder of FTX, said about 50 coins out of 1,000s have real value. That's pretty high, honestly. But he could be right. I think there's a lot of good projects out there with good people but the question is and like we talked about here the question is uh how are you going to scale that how are you going to scale the projects you have like let's let's take iota iota is a i've talked to those guys great team pretty smart people how are we going to scale it could take a quite a long time and there's some great there are here's an example go to any one of your um a, a strip mall or or a collection of of businesses in your in your hometown, wherever you're at, you will see that over time, there's always a vacancy. There's always a vacancy in one of those little parcels. What happened? It wasn't because it was bad business. Maybe it was, but uh, some people just can't scale. They can't keep up. They don't know uh, good accounting, marketing, uh, customer service. Maybe the product is bad. 
but there's, even if the product is good, I've been to restaurants that are fantastic and there's nobody in there. And I'm like, I tell my wife, Hey, we got to come back. This place is awesome. And like in a month it's gone because they just couldn't scale. So there's some good products out there. The question is who's going to be able to scale. And you can see it right here. These companies that keep coming up over the years, those are the ones that figured out the way to scale and to be profitable. It's the same thing in every business that I've ever been involved with and cryptocurrency and digital assets are absolutely no different. Yeah, man. Exquisite. AOL was once a giant. AOL was huge, huge. You, used to, you kids don't know. You get this thing called a CD and you pop it into your computer. I don't even have a CD drive on my computer now. And a little running man would come in do 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 and then you would be on the internet oh it was so so great and it would take 30 minutes to download a picture <laughs> and that was like cutting edge stuff and now that's like ridiculous and uh, again AOL if you look at their history they just made some they made some bad decisions and some bad mergers and they weren't able to scale that's what it comes down to uh, yeah no beer much younger that's what my wife said But the beard will come back. It's all white. Makes me look my real age. Uncle Sam is always watching. That's right. That's very right, actually. Now, this is a good, it's a good comment, which leads me to another point. Personal Pam waiting until the next Bitcoin halving. What do we got? Two years? 21. 2024, I think, right? So... I still think that those, those four-year cycles we I talk about, I mean, and some, some people say, well, Robbie, you don't understand. It's because you know, there was a pandemic and the supply chain issues and the Fed coming in. Regardless, the four-year the four year cycles, no matter what you want to say, just repeat and repeat and repeat. So that's not a bad idea, actually. If you say, I, was, I want to just wait till the next Bitcoin halving. What I'm going to do personally is uh, I will still keep dollar cost averaging. I expect Bitcoin to keep going down. There may be rallies and bumps in here and we'll go sideways, but it'll go down. And I'll keep buying that and Ethereum. And then when I feel like we've hit max pain or the max capitulation level, which I don't know if we're here yet, then I'm gonna start to really start to dollar cost average more of the alts because that's, that's where I made a lot of money. I just gotta make sure I pick, try to pick the, 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 the right project. And here's another, the, the next thing I will say is this, you're not gonna pick, pick all the winners. Let's say you pick 10, let's say you pick 10 of these. You're like, I like InfoSpace and Hotbot and Angel Fire and Zoom and Alta Vista, Lycos, Excite. And I'm also going to pick up Amazon <laughs> and uh, Microsoft. See, how, see what I'm talking about? You could pick all those things and just keep dollar cost averaging the stocks You know, as, as time went on. All you got to have is two to win. In 1998, I can tell you, oh, that's a great question. Let's see what the stock price of Amazon was in 1998. Uh, see if this will do this. Amazon. Huh. Oh, no way. So in August 1st, 1998, let's even go further. No way. Let's just take March. Amazon price was $6.90. Now you gotta wait a little bit of time, 20 years, but it's still 3,333. And of course, I mean, just take a look at that. So the rest of these things right here, where, uh, where do we go? Ba, 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 ba. The rest of these, they could all be, they could all suck. Who cares? Because you got, if you just played it safe and like, I got a long year uh, goal, then of course, you did okay. Now in 98, you'd been like, wow, six bucks, 13 bucks, 15 bucks. And then of course, when was, let me go back here. Not too bad. You're doing pretty good. But there was a point here. Where'd it go? Ah, yes. 2001, it was $14 and 72 cents. And then like next month, it went down to nine bucks and people were seven bucks. And then people were flipping out for like six months and then just kind of went back to where it was. So again, who cares? You don't gotta be a genius. You just gotta be stubborn. And that's really what it comes down to. And that's me. 
Uh, let's see what I miss. Yeah. Amazon was unprofitable for most of its life. And it was. And even uh, Bezos would come out and say, you know what? We're just going to reinvest and reinvest and reinvest. And that's how you scale. Ooh. YSK, just curious, did anyone else have their Luna Classic go missing from an account? It showed up in my account and then it disappeared and still not showing. It hasn't done that for me yet. Well, actually, let me check this because the thing that I checked was yesterday. I could be wrong. It's a great question. Although, if it disappeared, it's not going to affect my bottom line. I mean, that 700 or whatever I have, it's worth like 10 cents. Uh, let's see. Voyager. Uh, my portfolio. That's still there. I have a whopping 719, which is worth a nickel. Whatever. Or a dime, whatever. So, YSK, do me a favor, update your app on Voyager. I think they just rolled out another update, just to make sure. So, this is a great question. Vida. Rob, what's your thoughts on rebalancing techniques as opposed to DCA? So I rebalanced a little bit because I was like, you know what? Some of these aren't coming back. But these were like things that I have had for like a, quite a long time that either I was flat and not, um, well, it was always three. Some I was actually a little bit of profit in. Some I was like even, even Steven and some I actually lost. <laughs> and I'm like, these aren't coming back. I just didn't believe that they would. And I sold them and, and rebalanced it right into Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I think that's probably the better play. Now, that's just what I did. Now, you I met a gentleman in Puerto Rico in one of my meetups. And he made all his money on Cardano, all of it. And then he showed me his portfolio. And, and it was on, I swear to God, it was on his phone. It was on his phone. And he should look at this. And it was a million thirty-one thousand or something like that. Uh, I think it was... I can't remember which one it was, but uh, he had a million dollars in the goofiest coins of all time. And he goes, these, most of these will fail, but it's okay because in the next bull run, one of these, one or two or three of these is going to make it. He goes, and it'll be $10 million. And I was like, holy smokes, I would not do that. That is not a good idea. But he was pretty convinced. And you know what? He may it actually make out for him. But if you want to rebalance like that, I couldn't recommend that to my mother. So... That's as far as I can go with that. I don't care about the pride, but it makes me feel uneasy about Voyager. Yeah, it makes me feel uneasy too. That's weird. <sighs> Update and then reach out to him. But there's a lot of weird things going on with Luna. There's supposed to be an airdrop too, but I think that's if you only have a Luna wallet. And then uh, just activated the Voyager debit card. So for good for me, how's your car working? Here's the thing. Here's a quick update. I used my Voyager card when I went to uh, Europe and we were in Italy for a while. We were in London and France and it worked everywhere. And then when I came, when it, when I came back, it didn't work. And I think it was because there's like a, there's like a hold on it because <laughs> I was in Europe and then I came over here, but there was also a hold on my uh, USAA card too. So I got to call them and say, what's going on? Okay. Soul Train. What's a great name. So, yes, my Luna disappeared, then reappeared, but trading is locked. Yes, that's true. Trading is locked. Maybe they're locking the trades because they can't trade that stuff anymore. Okay. Smash Toshi Smakamoto asks, please speak about WASH trade strategies. When does it make sense? What are the parameters? How to use? The question is, can we do WASH trading? Well, if you're doing equities, you can't do that. That's totally illegal. WASH trading is... You have you buy Amazon stock at two thousand, and then it goes down to a thousand, and you sell it all. Which I'm just an example. Sell it all, and you take massive losses for your taxes, and that works out pretty well. And then what you do is you try to buy it back within seconds or minutes. You can't do that. You have to wait thirty days. However, with crypto, it's different. Crypto is not a security. Well, not not yet. Some are going to be securities. Let's just say it. Uh, so you can do that because, the, because the definition for most, most areas, I'm not talking about everybody outside of America. That's all I know is American law and loosely at that is that, 
uh, crypto is considered property. So when you sell uh, your crypto, you can buy it right back. So the example I gave was what I did with XRP. When XRP, I held it even though this was the initial part of when the SEC sued him, sued Ripple, not XRP, Ripple, the company, and Brad and Chris. And um, it went down, it was over a dollar, went down to 50 cents, 30 cents, and at 21 or 22 cents, I sold all of my XRP. Then I bought it right back. And it was a massive loss for that year. And I can claim it on my taxes. Thing is, is that you can only claim up to $3,000. So every year I can still carry those losses over. So let's say I had, I don't know, 40,000, 30,000 worth of losses, right? Every year I can only use three. So the next 10 years I can use $3,000 in losses. And that's the strategy. Uh, DJ Crypto says he does, he, do, he says, I do it all the time when things are going down. So I can always have these losses for my taxes. So hope that makes sense. Mining companies, good time. I got to talk to a friend of mine about that. I got a friend in Puerto Rico who does, that's all he does. And uh, I'm going to buy into Bitcoin miners and show you the whole process. I'm not going to run a, a facility. He has the facilities. I just buy the miners and I rent the space from, from him. I'll let you know how that works out. Oh, that's pretty good. My friend actually pays seven cents. I got extra paid a buck fifty. Oof, sorry. So, if he answers for but do you use Celsius? I do. And this will be the last question. We got to get out of here. Do you use Celsius? How do you feel about all the current allegations? So, there's a lot of allegations, and I'm not a big fan of that. But it seems like, like there's always an allegation somewhere. But I will say you cannot dismiss it just because just because I like Alex and Celsius doesn't mean you can dismiss it. You have to have no emotion in that. So probably have to get Alex back on the show and discuss what the heck is going on. And then uh, do I still use Celsius? I still use Celsius, but you have to remember, I don't keep a large chunk of my portfolio on Celsius. What's the point, right? I mean, it's not like the APR is that fantastic if everything goes down the tubes. So I keep a little bit there. Every week I get a nice little reward and uh, that's it. But the most of it is kept right here in this ledger. One of them actually, and that's it. So that's what I do. All right, so that's it everybody. So we went uh, almost coming up on an hour. So I'm glad you guys stuck with me. That was fun, fun times. But I'm gonna go enjoy the day, Memorial Day. Time for a little cookout and uh, don't look at your portfolio too much today. Although it is green, so good for you. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. It seems like the only way that YouTube does anything good with the channel. And that's it. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.